Welcome back to the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. I didn't the fans on considering that it has been a week where we have seen Bayern Munich win a treble for the second time in their history and become the first team in the history of football to have a second time treble. Joining me here in the fans on to discuss matters international football is the one and only Joe Sainer and we've got also Eric Aganya who is here I think second time now? It's been third time. It's been long since you came on to this fans on show. So how have you been Eric? I've been good, thank you. Yeah. I've uh, been fine. Mm -hmm. so we thank God for that. Well, well, well. Joe, welcome back again for another edition of the Fans of Big Week. Where did you, was your bet? Was it Bayern Munich or Paris Saint Germain? My, my bet was a high scoring game, game yes. but I knew Bayern was going to win. Uh -huh. But now I, did, I, I knew that you know, the scores would at least exceed more than mm -hmm. three goals, four goals. Yeah. So I didn't expect PSG mm -hmm. to be laxer in terms of the way they were finishing in yes. terms of being complacent. Mm -hmm. There's some goals you look back as Neymar. Yes. There's some goals that you missed if you look back as Mbappe. Mm -hmm. There's some goals Di Maria creating the chances and not, not missing to capitalize on them. Yes. And you wonder, you know, mm -hmm. Mbappe has a couple of more years. Mm -hmm. Still has 10 years he can play active football. Yeah. Um, Neymar has another maybe four, five years. Yes. Maybe if he can retire at 30, 34, 35. Mm -hmm. So you look at that squad and you're like, how many more chances will they get mm -hmm. to, to go to the final of the Champions League, yeah. let alone win it? Did you yeah. enjoy that game? Uh, not really, because uh, as, as Saina says, uh, yeah. we were expecting uh, a lot of goals. Eh? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what happened to PSG, and uh, it may take them a long time before they come back to the final, yeah. because this was uh, their best shot. This is what happened, Joe. A team of individuals versus a team. Yes. Is, is my analysis right? Your analysis, <laughs> your analysis is spot on. But I thought after the semi-final yes. that now individualism was over. Yeah. It was more of the team. You understand? Yeah. You, have the, you have the attack in three up front. Mm -hmm. Di Maria, Neymar, and Mbappe. Yes. If you put on paper in any game whatsoever, they should work in cohesion. Yes. They should be giving you the goals. Yeah. If you look at the defense, it's, it's sad that... Thiago Silva had to leave PSG, mm -hmm. not winning the Champions League, not because he did not play well. Yes. He actually organized that defense yeah. brilliantly. Mm -hmm. His link up with Marquinhos, who was just in front of him, yeah. in the defensive midfield, was, a, w was brilliant. Yeah. Look at Herrera. Mm -hmm. Some say he was a flop at Manchester United, yeah. but look at the strides he's making, he has made in PSG. Yeah. But like you said, the cohesion yeah. in the final was missing. I think everyone was looking towards the stars. Yeah. I'm going to make the Ballon d'Or this, this year, even if it was cancelled. I'm going to be known as the best footballer in the world mm -hmm. because of Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo now are heading out. Yeah. That, to me, was a loss. But for Bayern, it was an all oil, a well-oiled machine. Yeah. I mean, the grinds, the gears they were going through. Yeah. Yes, they didn't have the chances in the first half, mm -hmm. but you could see sooner or later yeah. they were going to score. And many people... The way you said it, thought that PSG was going to win because of mm -hmm. the trio, the attacking line that they had. But Eric, when you look at Bayern Munich, their teamwork was on another level. They do not get the chances because I think they are one of the teams that had won all their matches up to the final, scoring three plus goals against any opponent that they meet. Against PSG, they do not do that, but their teamwork really showed on that game. Yes, the, the, the teamwork was there and uh, I believe uh, the coach prepared for the final. Yeah. The coach prepared his squad that uh, they have to be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to get very many chances, but they have to be ruthless should they get a chance. Yeah. Uh, because you look at Bayern, as you've said, uh, the previous games they've been uh, scoring very many goals. Yes. And uh, they knew one way or another PSG is going to shut them down. Mm -hmm. They knew one way or another uh, Alphonse Davies will not come up. Mm -hmm. because uh, PSG has speedy wingers yes. who may take advantage. Mm -hmm. So the coach really prepared for this final. Yeah. And uh, as my friend Joe says, uh, this was a team effort. Yes. Bayern were ready for the final. Yeah. And uh, they were ready to carry it as a team, mm -hmm. not individual uh, accolades yes. as a team. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, for PSG, uh, they showed themselves in the foot. Very much. Yes. <laughs> a tough word there for us. Now, we were watching that game, I think it was an international feed, and the commentator said the only team that could have played Bayern Munich on this final could have been Liverpool. 
But a big loss that we did not see the best of the best of them coming on to the final. The likes of Liverpool, the likes of Barcelona, the likes of Atletico Madrid being knocked out early in the competition. I think for me, my, 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 my downside of this yeah. and where I was really sad was Leipzig. <laughs> yes. You understand? Yeah. Leipzig, it doesn't have the fantastic of players that you'd put them in the calibers of the Liverpools, of the Chelsea's, of the Man City's, yeah. of the Barcelona's and of the Real Madrid's. But they put their best foot forward. Yeah. It would have been amazing to see that final Leipzig, you know, with Bayern Munich. Why? Yeah. You know, German, German mechanism. Yes. You look at the way they would attack. Yes, the lack of Timo Werner up front, mm -hmm. uh, providing that pace, maybe, you can't say it could have caused the loss because mm -hmm. already the, the, the coach had already arranged this team yeah. beyond that signing that was taken by Chelsea. Yeah. So it's, it's just that, you know, Bayern Munich will dominate, you know, international football, you know, till the end of next season. Why? Because Leipzig is going to come up. Yeah. The likes of Leipzig, Liverpool, if they handle the transfer market very well, yeah. is going to come back. Manchester City has made the intentions known yeah. that you know that exit to the Champions League was not right. Hard biting for them. Barcelona yeah. have gone one ahead yeah. and cleared everyone uh -huh. so that they start afresh. Yeah. So the hunger to go back to the top it's is something that Bayern Munich has to watch out in the future. Yeah. Yes. Where? My extreme left, we've got Joe Sainer here and Eric Agani, and we are dissecting everything international football here on the fan zone here on Y254, the touchline. I'm Robert Rosoro at Y254 channel is where you can find us in all social media platforms. And then as the football is coming to an end, 34 days after the Champions League final, we are going to see the resumption of the English Premier League and all some of the other leagues all around the world. And one team that has been very active in this transfer window at the moment, they are still not done, has got to be Chelsea Football Club. So far, they have confirmed four signings. Are they the team to watch next season? I put that to you, Joe. I mean, <laughs> the challenge here was, and yeah. if you were given Chelsea last season, yeah. if you were given Chelsea last season, <laughs> if I was given Chelsea last season, yes. and you're telling me I have no transfer budget, yeah. okay, I have a transfer budget, but I've been banned uh -huh. to do any transfers, yes. okay? Secondly, yeah. I have an aging squad, and I have a brilliant youth system, that's youth team that has not played in the Premier League. Yes. Gel these teams together, and we expect you, mm -hmm. as the manager, to qualify for the Champions League next season. Yeah. I, in December, could have thrown already my hands up. <laughs> but that's why I'm not Lampard, because yes. yeah. what Lampard has done uh -huh. is a case of giving the youth an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Some pundits, even way back in the day, used to say that you cannot win any cups with young players. Yes. But what Chelsea have done, have shown faith in the youth, mm -hmm. and where necessary, have put their measures mm -hmm. to equip the squad. Yeah. If you're attacking, you're putting, not putting an established striker, not putting an, an, an experienced striker, you're putting a young, hungry striker, uh -huh. Tivo Warner. Yes. If you're going to go to an attacking midfielder who also can play as a whole player, or also as a roaming flank, you look at Ziyatek. Yes. You get. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at a solid defense mm -hmm. that is going to encompass its experience mm -hmm. and youth, Someone to lead the charge and tell the guys, it's okay, I know you guys are hot bloods, you need to cool down. Yes. This is a game that we can handle. Mm -hmm. Experience in Thiago Silva, yeah. a finalist at the Champions League. Okay, they have already signed, uh, his name is Sar, yes. S A R, yeah. who's also coming into Malang Sar. Malang Sar. Right. I had that name and I was like, Chelsea has signed a player from South Sudan. Yes. When we are Malang, <laughs> Malaga, like, ah, these are brothers from South Sudan. But so, is that so you see, player. so if, if you look, not only is he creating a winning mentality squad, mm -hmm. he's creating depth. depth in and that team. is something the big teams need. They need depth. Mm -hmm. We saw what happened at Barcelona. Barcelona yeah. did not have depth. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you substitute Messi, who are you going to put in? No, nobody do that. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing was, mm -hmm. if you're not going to play your star players like the likes of Griezmann, what is going to happen? Yeah. So for Lampard, mm -hmm. has a very good... Look at the starting three. Yeah. You have Zetek, you have... Buana, you have Pulisic. Mm -hmm. Okay, go to the midfield. You have Kante, who will hold to that midfield very well. Yeah. Go to the defense. I mean, the defense now, it's more of Rhys uh, James. Sorry, You have Thiago Silva. 
you have um, you have Sar who's Sar. just come in. Yeah. So and then you look at the at the goalkeeping. Mm -hmm. He has also got a new goalkeeper. Yeah. Chelsea is a rebuilding squad, but more importantly, they have shown the intent yeah. that this season we have to walk away with at least a title. Yeah. Whether it's the Sim FA Cup, yeah. whether it's the you know the Premier League, <laughs> the, we have to walk away with to one. That yes. Since Jose Mourinho joined Chelsea in 2004-2005, they won the trophy after a very long time. After around 50 years. After around 50 years, true. Yes. And after every three seasons, they have proved to lift a major trophy. Yes. Is this a season where teams should be scared with the engine Frank Lampard is building, Eric? I think when you look at on paper, everybody should be scared. Yeah. Because if you look at the names that are, are being put on paper, yeah. the names that they have signed, mm -hmm. uh, these are big names. Mm -hmm. These are people who have proved themselves. Yes. And uh, others are quite interesting talents coming in. Yeah. Uh, my only problem will be uh, the players who are coming uh, from other leagues, mm -hmm. them being able to adopt the Premier League. Yes. And uh, if uh, Timo Wana can adopt, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, they are good to go. Yeah. Uh, the problem comes in uh, when you have uh, very many players coming from outside. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not be able to really adopt the rigorous uh, mm -hmm. Premier League. Uh, yes. And that becomes, uh, you find that those players become flops. Yeah. And then um, Frank Lampard uh, has done something interesting. He's been mm -hmm. able to, to be able to blend youth and experience. Yes. If you look at uh, even last season when he did not sign, he let Luis go mm -hmm. and uh, maintained uh, William. Now yes. he's let William go. Yes. So you see, he's easing them slowly by, by yes. slowly. As he gets new leaders from these young people, mm -hmm. he, uh, he lets Actually, the there, are, there are rumors that Thiago Silva is being, might be confirmed as the next captain uh, of Chelsea. That's yes. a very good leader yeah, in the yeah, dressing yeah, room. Yeah, uh, Thiago Silva has uh, what it takes to be the captain. Yeah. He, he's been there, he's seen everything, mm -hmm. uh, his leadership qualities, he's able to marshal the, 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 his colleagues and uh, them being able to perform. And yeah. uh, I believe uh, that this, uh, this will be the season that will either yeah. make or break Frank Lampard. Yeah. Because if he doesn't perform, then what will you tell people? <laughs> Joey had forgotten Chilwell from Leicester. Chilwell. Ben Chilwell, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I didn't even finish. I didn't even finish the defense. Sorry, yeah. Ben Chilwell. So you have Chilwell, yeah. Sa, yeah. you have uh, Thiago Silva, Thiago Silva yeah. and Rich James. So you and James are the right back. Yeah. I mean, you it's still a it's Rudiger a rebuild. On the bench we there. still have Rudiger. We still yeah. have Zuma. We still Zuma. have Kat Zuma. Yeah. Are, you, are you seeing the depth? What I'm talking about? Yeah. It's it's unprecedented what Lampard can do this season. But again, a caution to. The Chelsea fans is that also you have to be patient yes. because gelling in all these new players doesn't yeah. mean you'll get instant results. Mm -hmm. You know, Mourinho will tell you otherwise that he, he brought in three, four players and yes. he got a title. Mm -hmm. But in the modern age sort of football whereby there's a lot happening, mm -hmm. I think what Lampard will do mm -hmm. officially is maybe start with his normal first 11 that yes. he finished the season with. Mm -hmm then obviously now putting these pieces together yeah. slowly by slowly. Yeah. But either way, they have to be um, patient with the manager. Well, Frank Lampard there and Chelsea Football Club making moves in this transfer window. But it is also a transfer window that we are getting reports confirmed and confirmed we do not know. But the hierarchy at Camp Nou, where Lionel Messi has been for the last 16 years, is in turmoil. And confirmed reports are saying that Lionel Messi gave in his transfer request by fax and is determined to leave Barcelona. The question is, is it true? Is it not? If it's true, what will happen to Barcelona? Did you see it even coming that at the end of the day, Lionel Messi is going to leave Barcelona? Is it time that now Lionel Messi leaves Barcelona? Question I pose to you, Joe. Did you see this coming, first of all? I mean, if we, if we look at history, yeah. Um, every every certain team or every certain legend, yeah. you know, has to agree to what's happening. Mm -hmm. The Arsenal Invincibles, yeah. a change had to happen. Mm -hmm. The Galacticos of Real Madrid, yeah. a change had to happen. The class of 92-93 of Manchester United that played all the way yeah. close to 2009 yeah. had to change. Mm -hmm. Barcelona itself had to change from yeah. the era of Ronaldinho mm -hmm. passing the torch to Messi. To, to Messi. Yeah. So now, for Messi, you're looking at the achievements he has made in Barcelona, yes. in its inception of, I think Barcelona is about 125 years. Yeah. If you look at the, I mean, 125 trophies that they have won. If you look at the 
most trophies that they have won with Messi is Over close, 30 yes, it's close to about 50 yeah. trophies, yeah. okay, with Messi. with Messi. So now Messi reaches to a point whereby he's not seeing the team pulling its own weight. Yeah. And you know, it's not only him, Arturo Vidal, yeah. he, Rakitic, yeah. you're looking at Umtiti, mm -hmm. you're looking at Suarez, mm -hmm. you're looking at Pique, mm -hmm. who openly said, you know what, if I have to be transferred, I am okay. Because yeah. the team holds a better a better position in the world yeah. than what the players are offering. Mm -hmm. Now, you will ask me, is it the right time for Messi to move? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Why is it the right time? Because he needs a different challenge. Yeah. At 33 years, you need a different challenge. You have two to three more years mm -hmm. in your playing status mm -hmm. before yes. now you start dwindling away. Mm -hmm. Unless now you have the physique of Cristiano Ronaldo that can push to 40. Yeah. So, what are your options? Yeah. Do I go for a, a fast-paced league like the Premier League? Do I stick in Spain and yes. look for maybe a second-rate team and play them my tick attacker that I'm used to? Yeah. Should I go to Italy, Inter Milan, and play as an attacking midfielder? Because they don't play as a winger, you don't yes. play as a roaming flank. Mm -hmm. Should I go to Germany? Germany is too technical. Yes. So if you look at his options, you have Man City. They are limited. You have PSG, mm -hmm. the p the where he can play his games, mm -hmm. Man City and PSG. Yeah. Now, if he goes to Man City, you're telling me now Mares will be on the bench. If he goes to PSG, Di Maria will be on the bench because he has to play on that right side. Yeah. So these are tough decisions that these teams have to make. And also for Messi to realize, maybe, just maybe, I can't start every other game. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe, I have to be an impactful substitute sometimes. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, I can't win all the titles that I've w wanted to, but now I can challenge myself. Yeah. So in my opinion, he should move and get a new challenge. Wow. Eric, you are a Manchester United fan and you have been hurt when your legends move. Yes. You think you are Ruud Van Estroy coming up to the peak of his career, Real Madrid takes David him. Beckham. David Beckham, Real Madrid goes with him. Cristiano Ronaldo, peak of his career with Manchester United, Real Madrid uh, knocks on the door and is gone. What advice can you give Barcelona fans? Because now they are coming to the reality that Lionel Messi is gone and we do not have another Lionel Messi. I, I think uh, uh, what I'll tell the, 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 the Barcelona fans is to accept that uh, Messi's time uh, is up. Yes. Uh, because if you look at uh, the mess that Barcelona is in right now, mm -hmm. uh, largely as much as Messi has really contributed to, to winning those trophies, yeah. uh, he, uh, in the last one or two seasons, he has also contributed to them uh, not doing really well uh -huh. because uh, he, he wants to be the most powerful person. Y yes. And uh, at no given time uh, can a player be more powerful than maybe the coach yeah and uh, when you give uh, the player so much power then you find that uh, it becomes a problem mm -hmm. it um, disrupts the structure of the club yes uh, because uh, uh, the problem that uh, Barcelona is in is self-inflicted yes look at their squad uh, eight of their starting 11 are above 30 years mm -hmm. yeah you will not be able to, comp to compete in modern football yeah uh, uh, you should have they should have uh, eased uh, in did they, uh, they take long to change they that they, they took long and I think uh, they also s to some point they abandoned their their culture of bringing in young players from the youth academy and uh, they started buying big yeah. remember Barcelona has not been a club that has been buying big if you look at uh, the likes of Iniesta, the yeah. likes of Xavi, when uh, Xavi was uh, retiring, we knew Iniesta is going to take that place. Yes. Uh, whom did they groom to take over after Messi? Uh -huh. Because uh, right now, what I will say, and in quotes, uh, Messi has uh, maybe become a spoiled brat. He <laughs> feels that uh, he can do whatever he feels like. <laughs> yeah, he's, and, uh, he's become and, uh, a power player. Yes, and <laughs> make demands. Eh? Yes. And uh, what Roland Kuman is doing, uh, I really applaud that. Th that, that that's what I've been told, that yes. Ro Roland Kuman said that your privileges as a player now yes. are done. Yes, you remember, the there a, you remember there was a time, uh, mm. Rooney, when Rooney and Ferguson had a problem, yes. mm. and Ferguson sat him down and told him, L listen here, the most important person in Manchester United mm. is me as Ferguson, yes. because I am the coach. Mm -hmm. I manage all of you. Yeah. And you see, you need a coach who comes in and puts his foot down. Yes. And uh, if it takes Messi to go, let Messi go. Yeah. So that, uh, because you look at uh, 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 what has happened to big players like uh, Anton Griezmann mm -hmm. uh, in Atletico, Look at uh, now him coming to Barcelona. If you look at the not game, performing not performing. Not performing. Look, look at the game against uh, Bayern. Mm. Yes. 
Guzman, 140 million on the bench. Yeah. Uh, Osman Dembele mm -hmm. on the bench. Then why were you buying these players? Mm -hmm. Why were you buying these players? And if you bought them and they came in, yeah. why are they not mm -hmm. playing? Because mm -hmm. maybe one player is dictating who yes. plays and mm -hmm. who doesn't play. Yeah. Then he should resign and become the coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel uh, uh, Messi should go. And um, the only place that Messi can go and do something yeah. is Manchester City. Yeah. B before we talk about Messi performing outside there, let's look, Joe, at the problem now in Barcelona. I think this season, before the COVID-19 pandemic and it coming to an end, st stats that came out was the English Premier League, also the traditional club of Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal, were playing their youngest squads ever in the history of football. Yes, yes. Those teams were playing their youngest squads ever. Mm -hmm. Now, you cross the tide and go to Barcelona. They have over six players over the age of 30. You add players who are over the age of 28, you get to eight or nine players in Barcelona. How will they come out of that? If Messi leaves and we get the likes of Suarez who have been mm -hmm. told that also your time here is done, mm -hmm. you get the likes of Gerard Pique, Sergio Busquets, who even if the club wants you, your stamina cannot maintain in that level. How will they get out of that hole that they have dug themselves in? So, uh, I, I, I think that's, that's an answer that I'll give you now and also pose <laughs> to the fans on fans. Yeah. You know, just comment about it because yeah. what I think is a club restructuring that mm -hmm. goes straight to the youth. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now, if I was Ronald Koeman and look at the squad that I have, I would start in the attacking. In the attacking, I have Dembele, mm -hmm. I have Coutinho who's coming back, yeah. and I have Griezmann. Yeah. That should be my attacking. Mm -hmm. Okay, I come to the midfield. I have At Arthur, Atour, mm -hmm. I have De Jong, mm -hmm. and I have um, Busquets' younger brother, mm -hmm. who has been on loan. Okay? Yeah. Same pedigree, come up through the system, the youth system, and now, he's in, and now he should come in mm -hmm. and play. Yeah. Go to the defense. Yes, Semedo was embarrassed mm -hmm. by Davis, but Semedo is still a young, he, uh, he's still at 27. Yeah. So you give him the right back. You go into the middle, you have Leggett and you have Umtiti. Yeah. Both of them still at 27. Yes. And you have Junior Frimprong on the left. So if you look at the combined age, yeah. it comes to 27. Mm -hmm. Combined age. The only two guys, the only three guys will be all in that team is Coutinho, is Griezmann and the keeper test and the keeper yes just again yeah but the rest now build your squad around these guys and get the likes of Atsufatsu in mm -hmm. get the likes of you know new signings. new signings not only academy signings but young signings that can come in and mold that team yeah it's not a crisis really it's more of how do you manage those guys who have remained you have a first 11 yeah but not a first 11 that will win you the la liga not yeah. a first 11 that will win you the champions league but a first 11 that can build to the next two seasons now the biggest thing i learned during the week was former players pushing for savvy Mm -hmm. to come back to Barcelona, to be a coach of Barcelona, because they see after, Sa after Pep Guardiola, our next light was Savi. Mm. But Savi himself wrote to Barcelona and to most of the people and told them, yes, having the Barcelona coach is a dream for me and them, but I am not ready to be a Barcelona coach. Yes. <laughs> I, I think that is, that is the best thing that uh, uh, Xavi did eh? yeah. uh, because uh, the mess that is there right now uh -huh. doesn't need a, a, a coach who is, uh, who is not experienced. Yes. It needs an experienced coach mm -hmm. who will be able to balance mm -hmm. uh, the outgoing generation yes. and the incoming generation. generation. As Dio as, as says, uh, Barcelona already have players mm -hmm. who can play. Yes. but not uh, players who can maybe win them the league. Yeah. So they need somebody who has the experience. And maybe Kuman may be a transitional coach yes. in preparation for Xavi to so, come in. Because yeah. if Xavi comes in right now, uh, he'll be embarrassed because yeah. uh, uh, he will not know how to manage uh, uh, the crisis that Barcelona is, yeah. is in. Because uh, if you look at Barcelona, uh, I, I saw the teams that went to the Champions League, the later stages, mm -hmm. they had the, best, uh, the, the, the highest average age of 29, uh -huh. when the other teams were having 26 and 25. Oh, yes. yeah. So you see, it does not mean that they had 29 and they didn't have players who could mm -hmm. have brought that average age down. Yes. But the coach at that time was not playing those players. Yeah. He was playing the old players. And, if, uh, and that is what really happened. So you need to bring in the young blood. Mm -hmm. And also, you need somebody who is 
experience. experience. Xavi doesn't have that experience. Yeah. So to me, I think uh, for him, saying that was the best decision at this particular moment. Well, until that signature is put in place, that's when we'll believe that Lionel Messi is officially leaving Barcelona. And where is he headed? The biggest place is Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain, Inter Milan, and Man United. So are the teams that have been fronted out there that they can acquire the services of Lionel Messi. But the likely contender to get that signature is Manchester City under Pep Guardiola. And Joe... When you look at Lionel Messi, his successful performance was under Pep Guardiola. Mm -hmm. They had you know, 14 major trophies under Pep Guardiola in the span that Pep Guardiola was the coach of Barcelona. It could be a good PR-up if Messi comes to Man City. No, it would because Pep understands how Messi will want to play. He actually molded him. Molded him, yeah. yeah. But now, yeah. the bigger challenge is will he adapt into the Manchester City system? Mm -hmm. Will he adapt into the Premier League system? Yes. Premier League system, it's a fast-paced game. You have to be rough. You, don't, you, you, cannot, you cannot be there, you know, his quick feet, Messi. Yes. It's, like, it's like watching the late Bruce Lee, but yeah. now of football. His quick feet, his movement. But now, you get someone like Van Dijk, mm -hmm. who clanks into you. You get someone who's angry like Rudiger, who clanks into you. Yes. You get those defenders, those proper hardened defenders. You know, will he handle it, really? Will he have the favors that he used to have at Barcelona? And like you said, player power is important. Yeah. But you're coming to a Manchester City that already has player power. But he has Chaz managed Aguero. to play with the likes of Sergio Ramos in Madrid. Oh, that's one of games. That's a one defender. <laughs> yeah. If you get a proper stroke, stroke defender, yeah. or you get a proper West Brom defender, yes. I slash you till tomorrow. Do, it, do, it's a hardened game, but yeah. my idea is this. Yeah. If he's going to fit in, and that's why I think PSG is a good fit for him. Yeah. I'm not saying that league is a farmer's league, because many people have been saying League One is a farmer's league, but mm -hmm. it produced the team that got to the finals. Yes. No, all I'm saying is the style of play. Yeah. Okay. And if you look pound for pound, the competition that you will get in League One as compared to the True. Premier League. Won't be that intense. The Premier League is tough. Premier League, to the, the, the top 10 teams are already tough. <laughs> yes. You know, you, you meet up with Wolves. Wolves will do something. You meet up with Everton. You meet Burnley. up with Sheffield United. Yeah. Burnley. Uh -huh. You understand these yes. teams? And then there's leads coming up. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Proper season teams. Yeah. So he will go there for the adventure. He'll go there and get a couple of goals here and there. He'll contribute to the overall performance of Manchester City. Yeah. But if he's looking for individualistic, yeah. keyword, individualistic trophies or mentions, yeah. go to PSG. You're, you're driving to my next point because Eric now, yes. Jamie Carragher yes. wrote on Sky and said, yeah, Messi can come to Manchester City, but he will not make them unbeatable. Yes, he will not make them unbeatable because our uh, age has come in. Uh -huh. He will not play every weekend uh -huh. or two games in a week. Yeah. And uh, But him coming to Manchester City, I think that's a perfect match. Yeah. Uh, because uh, even Pep, the last uh, Champions League he won, he won with Messi. He, he can convince he, 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 him yes, that, he, he, just give me two years. Just give me, he can come in and put in two seasons. Eh? Yeah. And uh, uh, Pep Guardiola having worked with Messi, he will be in a better position to manage him. Yes. But uh, what I can't wait, I can't wait to see Messi in a... a on a on a, 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 a rainy stock night, <laughs> yes. playing against stock. stock City. What's <laughs> bro? Coming Those in away games. Hey. Hey. Those tacos are coming. Yes. In. The tacos are flying. Eh? Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. You hmm? can't. I can't wait. Well, but uh, him coming to Manchester City, yeah. uh, there's also one advantage. Silver has left. Uh -huh, yes. So he may come and fill the, the void that, that has been left by mm. by Silver. But yeah. uh, but I'm sorry. Pound for pound, the gameplay. That Silva generated in Man City as compared yeah. to what Messi would generate in Man City are yeah. two different, <laughs> two different scenarios. Silva was in a different class. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying that you, you can't compare them pound to pound because they played two different positions. Mm -hmm. But what Silva was doing in terms of creating the goals, mm -hmm. in terms of driving the team forward with these passes, yeah. I don't think Messi would do the same. Sil the Silva English was in a different driven. level. <laughs> yeah. Well, that has been the biggest story of the week. Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona. The touchline here on Y254, I'm Robert Osoro. I've got Eric Aganya here and also Joe Sainer here for the fan zone. And now we move on to the next story. And one of the next stories is Jamie Vardy will be finishing his career at Leicester City. He has actually added a new contract to stay at the club until 2023. 
2024 season. Good one for Jamie Vard, one of the success stories of the English Premier League and Leicester Football Club. Yes, good one. And uh, I think Leicester should be the master statue. Uh -huh. for, what, for what he has yes. done for them. Yeah. Uh, he won them the league yes. and uh, he's been loyal yeah. and uh, he fits their game. Mm -hmm. And uh, you look at his age, he's above 30 and the things yes. he's doing, the runs he's making yeah. are, are weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you expect those runs from a 24 year old, mm -hmm. a 22 year old. Yes. And uh, he's, he's got players who, who understand him, yes. who know that uh, this way I place the ball for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been a good servant mm -hmm. and that's a good thing for him. Joe, talk about his journey. From a non-league player to a Premier League winner, I think I think su such such stories are, yeah. are seen in movies. Yeah, such stories are, are, are even folklore. Yeah. to be honest, <laughs> yes, because yeah. non-league <laughs> to winning the Premier League. Yeah, there is non-league to playing in the Premier, Premier League. league. Yeah. There is non-league yeah. to winning uh, to playing in the World Cup squad. Yes, so, so, mm -hmm. and not winning the World Cup. Yeah, okay, but there is non-league to win the Premier League Becoming and not a with a top three or top four team, yes. but a team that came out of nowhere, no. promoted and they were promoted and towards the end, they actually rescued themselves before they were, b before they were rele relegated. They were not relegated, they, were, yes. they rescued themselves. Mm -hmm. And then now Ranieri comes in mm -hmm. and begins a system that we had already forgotten about, 4-4-2. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so yeah. you have a quick striker mm -hmm. and you have a striker in the likes of Ojoa, in the likes of Oka uh, Okasaki, Okasaki, who yeah. would create the goals mm. for Jamie Vardy. Yes. So that gameplay until now is still being played with the new players mm -hmm. because they understand the input that Vardy can put in that team. Yeah. You can put Vardy in Manchester United right now and he'll be a flop. Wh according one of the few according to, the, to the presses, okay. he'll be a flop there yes. because he's not, he doesn't understand the sort of gameplay. You put him in an, Engli in an England squad. He hasn't yeah. been very successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Harry Kane has been the one who has been mentioning that position of yes. late. But the fact that he understands his Leicester squad, his Leicester gameplay, mm -hmm. I am really happy as a pundit, as a fan, mm -hmm. that he can finish his career in a team that he almost, it's almost molded around him. Yes. You have that safe cushion mm -hmm. and you still play professional football. Yeah, yeah. Now, Leicester, as we are still sticking with them, Jamie Vardy adding another season. They have lost Chiwa to Chelsea, but they are still have the spine of their team from the season they won the league mm. with up to the moment. They are still a team to beat next season. Yes, they, they, they have a good coach. Uh. Yeah. They have a good coach, and uh, Leicester has uh, one gift of uh, an acting. Uh, James uh -huh. and uh, them losing Chiwel, uh, I'm not particularly worried because uh, yes. somebody will come up mm. and take that position. They, they, they do that all the time. Yeah. Look at they, they lost Mares, uh -huh. uh, they lost Kante, mm -hmm. and uh, the departure of Kante. Somebody comes in yes. and takes over. Mm -hmm. And uh, with uh, the good coach Brendan Rodgers being there, I'm sure uh, next season. They'll give uh, the top teams uh, a run for their money. Yeah, but yes. they have to work on their defense. And yes. some of their players it are being linked. We, we had Madison being linked to Manchester United, and I saw Soyunko mm. so being linked yes. to Barcelona. No, but Ma Madison has signed another contract. So a new contract. A new contract. Yeah. Uh, he has signed a new contract, so he may not be leaving mm -hmm. uh, this season. Yeah. But if so, if, if Barcelona coming for Soyunko, uh, that uh, means uh, there has to be some worry in the Leicester ranks. Yeah, yeah that will be tough. Some teams, when some teams come for you as a player. Yeah. You really have to think. Mm -hmm. You really have to sit down and, and ask yourself, yeah. my career-wise, what mm -hmm. has Soyunku won with mm -hmm. Leicester Less City? Uh -huh. What are the possibilities of him winning something with Barcelona, the yes. prestige of playing mm -hmm. in Barcelona? Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and that's why I said they have to work on their defense because yeah. if Soyunku goes, you remain with the veterans, John Evans and Wes Morgan, yeah. who has been a dedicated captain yes. and a pillar of that team. But... Age is aging, catching up, yeah, so that's something they need to look at in that defense. A big one there from there. And then we have got the case that is happening of Harry Maguire having problems in Greece. There was assault for him there. A bad one for Harry Maguire also making him miss the UEFA Nations League squad. A bad one. Uh, I think it's a bad one. Bad decisions uh, that have come to, to, to affect him. But uh, he should be able to, to, to live with the consequences. Yeah. Because uh, I think, he, I don't know, he got excited or... <laughs> no, one <knows. laughs> no one knows. Eh? Yeah. And uh, it has really, at some point, has dented his, uh, his image. Eh? Yeah. Because uh, him not just being a football player, mm -hmm. but when he's out there, he's a the captain of Manchester United. Yeah. Uh, that's a big, big, big responsibility. Yeah. He's a brand ambassador of Manchester United. Bad one for Manchester and Maguire. 
I think it's it's just bad management. I'm sorry. Yeah. We have had bad boys before. Yes. Anelka apparently walked out in the front squad yeah. in the World Cup. Yes. But he still went back to Chelsea and won a title. Yeah. We have had before Beckham having his, his role outside there, but he yeah. still comes back and plays for Manchester United. Yes. We, c we have these players. We have the likes of Arturo Vidal. Yeah. We have one Sebastian Veron back in the day. Yeah. So, did he make a mistake when he was when he was in his holiday? Whatever happened, yes. Mm -hmm. But omitting him from the national squad does not in any way help mm -hmm. the England setup. Why? Yeah. Because his skill is the one that you take into the pitch. Yes. Okay. Disregard the idea that he has made things outside there. He has done wrongful things outside there. Mm -hmm. We still need him as a defender. Manchester United yeah. still need him as a defender. Yeah. England still need him as a defender. Rio Ferdinand, I mean, he also had issues. Yes. But did he not make it to the England squad and to the Manchester United squad? So I just think it's bad management from the England Football Association. Mm. He should have been in the squad to go ahead and play. Now, Manchester United have not been vocal in this transfer window. They actually, they, they gave uh, Dean Henderson a new six-year deal to join the goalkeeping department. That will be good for them. But do they really need people in this transfer window their team is already made for next season? No, we really need, need people. Uh, what I believe, we don't need the big names that are being mentioned outside there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need uh, three or four players uh, because uh, the Premier League is starting. Yes. And uh, what we need is depth. Uh -huh. If you look at the game that we lost against Sevilla, in the second half, we played very well. Yeah. Uh, but the goals were not coming. Mm -hmm. When the coach looks at the bench, he doesn't see anybody who can come in and effect change on, on that game. Yes. And that's why he, he let the game go for a very long time before making that substitution. We need that person on the bench who can come in mm -hmm. and change the dimensions of, of the, the game. game. Uh, what I'm disagreeing with is that, uh, you see, we, we, we are taking so much time as Manchester United uh, chasing after Sancho. Uh -huh. uh, rather yes. than uh, we should be chasing for uh, targets, maybe a, a, a natural number nine, yes. like Eminem was being sold for 29 million pounds. Yes, uh, that we can Eminem of uh, Wolves. Uh, Wolves. Yeah, he has, he's, uh, he's 29. He has the experience. Yeah. He's proved himself in the Premier League, mm -hmm. and he's a good finisher. Yeah, and he's coming in cheap. Yeah, so we could have gone for that one. Mm -hmm. So that should the dynamics of the game change, you can push Marshall to the wing and push Rashford to the wing mm -hmm. and have him as a number nine. Crosses coming in. And you see, that will confuse the opponent because yeah. we are playing the same, same system. Uh, I, I think uh, what is also uh, amusing me or not, I'm not comprehending is um, the structure in Manchester United. Uh, are they not seeing this? I think what we also need is a football director yes. who can now assist the coach in handling football matters, in navigating the transfer window because we should be having targets. Yeah. And um, we need another midfielder. Should Pogba have a new Should Bruno uh, be fatigued? Yes. Who comes in? Do we have those kind of people? We have mm -hmm. Mata on the bench who is mm -hmm. aging. Yes. He may not uh, be the same Mata who was there four or five seasons ago. Yes. So we need to bring in another person. Joe, who, who could you want to come in? Uh, if I was a coach, I would read into Barcelona. I get your utility <laughs> players. Arturo Vidal yes. comes in perfectly and slips in where Pogba, mm. if he's injured, you have yeah. a solid midfielder who's a box-to-box -box mm. midfielder yeah. who can also mm. go forward. Mm. You have Ivan Rakitic. Yeah. If Bruno Fernandes has a problem, maybe, maybe you, need to, you need a squad team to play yeah. a certain FA game mm -hmm. in, the, in the first stages, bring in Rakitic. Yeah. If you're looking at the attacking, I know this will sound funny to Manchester United supporters, <laughs> but I actually go for Luis Suarez. Yes. As a utility striker, uh -huh. a number nine. Yeah. Don't take away Rashford's position. Don't yeah. take away Martial's position. Yeah. Don't take away the positions of the team that finished the Premier League so well. Yes. Just add utility players. Yeah. Give them a one-year contract on a rolling basis. Or even Cavani. Or even, yeah, Cavani. Yeah. Yeah. Only 33 <laughs> years old. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you understand. So if yeah. you put in those utility players, give them a one-year rolling contract, mm -hmm. they will be so motivated that they will play very well to even extend their contract and the idea of playing for Manchester United yeah. from the likes of Barcelona, from PSG. Yeah. These players will give so it to you. You guys are really annoyed that Manchester is not 
making noise in this transfer window. It's, it's not, not even about noise. For me, it's about utility. It, it, it's, substitution. it's about go, go, going for the wrong target. Uh, yeah. Because you're going to spend 120 million pounds mm. uh, or dollars uh, on, on, on one, one, player. one, one player. player. Yeah. One player. You could have used the same thing. You have the talent. Yes. That player will not come and bench Marshall. Yes. Will not come and bench uh, uh, Rashford. Yes. You have uh, that 120 million. Mm -hmm. You could have used it to get four players. Look at Nathaniel Ake before he went to, mm -hmm. to Man City. Yeah. He wanted Manchester United being mm -hmm. sold at 40 million pounds. Yes. You bring him into the defense. He's a mm -hmm. left si uh, side defender. Yeah. He will be able, he can be played uh, 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 side by side uh, with Maguire. Yes. And uh, in case he's not there, you have Lindelof. Uh, you get to the midfield, get those cheap targets. Yeah. 30, 40 million pounds. Mm -hmm. Get the numbers in because the yeah. games will come in thick and furious. They yeah. will come in so many. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. If you look at the Leipzig defender. Yes. Yeah. What the hell is he still doing in Leipzig? Upemekano. Upemekano. Yeah. I'm even wondering <laughs> what much... And you can get a good deal yes. of 45 to 50 million on that defender. Uh -huh. So the idea is this, and what he said is true. Yeah. The director of football, the hierarchy above, mm -hmm. needs a restructuring so that yeah. they can see the vision mm -hmm. that, you know, the coach has. Because the vision is, we go forward, we win the Premier League. Yes. We go forward, we get into the Champions League, Mm -hmm. We get into the latter stages, yes. but you need a squad yes. that can You win. cannot mm -hmm. just win it with the first 11. Yes. Well, you need a squad. That you need a squad to go for the game there. And finally, the season is back. Very fast, actually, considering that no one expected this. But it is the times we are living in. And uh, now the English Premier League is back. And today, on KBC Channel 1, the FA Community Shield will be live. Liverpool versus Arsenal. That will be the opening of the season. A big game there that everyone will be watching from 6.30 p.m. Kenyan time. And that is how the season kicks off. Liverpool winning the Premier League. Then Arsenal coming on and winning the FA Cup. Is it a good time to start the season with these two sides starting where they left off last season? It's an interesting game. Although I'm sure the players would have wanted to rest more. Yeah. Uh, because they, 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 they've just been uh, through the rigorous Premier League. Yes. Uh, but the game is here with us, and uh, it's a good game to start with. Uh, yeah. And uh, I believe, personally, I believe uh, Liverpool have an edge. Yes. <laughs> over Arsenal. Over Arsenal, because yeah. uh, uh, Arsenal is a team in transition. Mm -hmm. Uh, they beat Chelsea because Chelsea was also a team in transition. transition. Uh, but Liverpool is a team that has already completed that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, the coach, Jurgen uh, Klopp, knows his squads, mm -hmm. knows his players so much. Mm -hmm. He knows how to change the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has an edge over Teta because you look at the real-time decisions that Klopp makes. Yes. Very fast. Mm -hmm. That a substitution that will change mm -hmm. the game. Yes. And then uh, you look at the players, uh, Arsenal of, uh, relying on Abumea. Yes. Should he not perform, mm -hmm. they're in trouble. Yeah. Should he not perform, they're in trouble. But Liverpool have varied options. Yes. If uh, Mane is not on top of his game, Salah will come in and do the, the trick. Firmino will come in and do the trick. So they are more of a complete uh, squad. Yeah. And I believe uh, today is uh, the final is for Liverpool to lose. It's there. Yeah. Big game that one will be, we do not deny that. But the question, Joe, is... I think Man City of late time is the team that has defended that trophy. Win it, then come back and win it again. Now, Liverpool, 30 years later, you've won it. That jinx is broken. Now you have this trophy. Do they have what it takes to defend this trophy? Considering every team in England has been strengthening. Mm. Do they have what it takes to defend this trophy? So, I would like to read to you yes. the lineup yes. for the last two friendlies mm -hmm. that Liverpool have played. Yes. What springs out of this, mm -hmm. you'll tell me. Uh -huh. Alisson, Williams, mm -hmm. Gomez, Van Dijk, Robertson. That's the defense. defense. Gini, Wanadon, Fabinho, Keita, mm -hmm. midfield. Mm -hmm. Salah, Fabinho, Mane. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many seasons has that team played? Three or four or five oh. seasons together. So it screams to you consistency. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are on the lucky side that these guys still have two to three years to play. Yes. Before they get to the aging Barcelona sort of age mark. Mm -hmm. So when you tell me, are they still hungry? I think they want to go above. They yeah. want to reach that 20 mark yeah. of the Premier League and overtake Manchester United. Yes. I believe that's their goal. Mm -hmm. I also believe that they want to have another crack at the Champions League yes. and make sure that they become one of the few teams that have won it after, after one season. Yes. You know, sometimes you look, if you remember any team, 
an English team that has won the Champions League, then missed out on the second part, then won it the third part. Not many. I, I think it was a, if you think about a, a it, pity to Manchester for them when they were top of their game, yes. they lost to the best in the world that yes. time. I think they, they won 2008, mm. lost in you know, 09 and 11, yes. two consecutive finals yeah. against Messi and Guardiola. Mm -hmm. That was a tough one. Then if them. you look at the transfer policy that Liverpool are doing right now, mm -hmm. look at the people that they have signed in. Mm -hmm. No big names. Yes. Utility squad members mm -hmm. who are also again young, who can be brought into the Liverpool setup. And also in a slow pace. In a slow pace, in the, the, the likes of Brewster. Brewster yeah. is uh, is from the academy. Yes. He's coming in to fill Firmino's shoes yeah. one day. Mm -hmm. But he's been brought in like he played in the friendly, the two friendlies yes. against Salzburg. Mm -hmm. He played there and then Firmino came in. So mm -hmm. they're, they're gelling these teams together, yeah. these players together into this team. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Arsenal need to look to also. Yeah. The problem with Arsenal fans, mm -hmm. I'm going to say this right now, have too much expectations. But on paper, they believe they have the best squad. Yeah. That's the problem. The expectations over overweigh the yeah. abilities mm -hmm. on the field. Yeah. I mean, Ateta needs time. Yeah. With the signing, with the signing of William, yeah. he's shown his intent that you know what, I can go for the big boys. Mm -hmm. I can go for the established players who can play in a certain way. Yes. But you need to give him time. Okay. To he's given you an FA Cup. Yeah. Now. Don't pressure him to give you the Premier League. Pressure him to get into the Champions League. Yes. Same thing as Manchester United. I'll Come back to the top yeah. level. Come back to the top level. Yeah. Establish yourself as a top level. Yeah. Then the sky, the sky is open to you. Because I'll give you one last example. AC Milan. Yeah. AC Milan was at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. 2000 to 2009. Yeah. Then all of a sudden... Went down. Berlusconi brought the, the, the club down. Yeah. They lost players. They lost the coaching team. Mm -hmm. Now look. It's been 11 years and AC Milan is still trying to get back to where it was. Yeah. Now, Eric, your final word on this game today. And do you think the rumors going around will make it through that Thiago Alcantara will leave Champions League winning team Bayern to Liverpool? I think uh, uh, he should leave because uh, the, he wanted to leave before the final. Mm, yes. And then uh, it's like, uh, I don't know if it's a club or him who is trying to change his mind. Yes. Uh, but I think uh, him uh, coming to Liverpool uh, is an interesting addition to Liverpool. Uh, I, I, I would wonder why Klopp wouldn't want him. I think yes, Klopp yes, would Klopp want him. Klopp, so Klopp wants him because yeah. he's also coming in cheap. It's, and yeah, if it's you look a at plug and play. Yes. Uh -huh. He's also coming in cheap. Yeah. Uh, and you look at Liverpool signings, uh, they do those cheap signings yes. that uh, will be eased in because Henderson, uh -huh. uh, Thiago Alcantara could easily replace uh -huh. Henderson. Uh -huh. Henderson in the, in, yes. the, in, the, in the Liverpool team. And he's an engine in that engine. Also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So him coming to Liverpool will be a good, a go, a good move for him. Yeah. And uh, to the final today, uh, personally, I give it to Liverpool. Wow. You? I would give it to Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal <laughs> defeated Liverpool <laughs> last season. They had already won the league. <laughs> because of, I'd give it to Arsenal yes. because of one thing. Uh -huh. The hunger that Arsenal had towards the final of the FA Cup. Yes. Okay. Towards the scrutiny of so many fans that they cannot make it. Yeah. is going to be their food today. Yeah. I'm telling you this. It will be a surprise. Okay, many people will say out there that Liverpool would win. It's fine. Yes. I believe Arsenal has something in this game. Uh -huh. And I believe Arsenal, on the right day, yeah. can beat Liverpool for the Community Shield. Goals, quickly. 2-1. Liverpool. Yes. Whew. Well, that's, that's <laughs> tricky. I, 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 I would go with 3-2 Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. That's where we leave it here on the touch. It has been a very good fan zone segment here. We've been talking to Joe Sina, who is the host, Joe's Dugout. Is it out yet? Yes, yes, yes. Doing yeah, we're, do, we're doing the podcasts now. Yeah. So um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be releasing them. And then yeah. now, you know, the fans can also chip in, whereby yeah. we'll be having fun interaction. And so, because I really want to get Arsenal fans on the show. Yes. They really have a lot to talk <laughs> about. <laughs> they really have a lot to say. Yes, yes, and yes, Eric yes. Agaja, who is a football analyst here on Y254. 254 i am Robert Osoro. Maxwell Wasiki had a bit of a family emergency. We'll be getting to know what has happened to him and we'll be learning more about that. But for everyone who has managed to make this broadcast a success, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing and tune in to Channel 1 for the Community Shield Cut and Race and Opener Liverpool versus Arsenal. Good afternoon. <laughs>